Great. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Kira King and I work in the Arts Office in Dunleary Rathdown County Council. I'm really delighted to welcome you all this morning. I'm here with Carolyn Brown, my colleague from the Arts Office, and also Deirdre Moynihan and Kieran Kilbride from Music Network. Um, very happy to be here to introduce our 2024 Musicians in Residence Scheme. Um, we'll just go through the residency scheme with you. Deirdre will give an introduction to the application process and just talk through what support materials you need and what you, you need to have for your application. We're going to give you a virtual tour of DLR Lexicon and the studio space, uh, which might be useful for anyone who hasn't been in the space. And then Kieran will run through a tech spec of the studio so that you'll know what's there and what's available to you. We'll have an overview of some of the previous residencies and then we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. So we just ask you if you have any questions as you go along, you can just put them into the Q&A box and we'll be able to ask them at the end. So to talk through um, the residency scheme, it's funded by Dunleary Rathdown County Council and the Arts Council and it's managed by Music Network. Uh, we've been running it for several years now. We've had a really broad range of musicians and groups take place in it. It's an opportunity for you to get funding to develop and showcase new work. So this can be compositional and or performance. And it's also a chance to develop new artistic collaborations. And um, we've had a number of really successful new collaborations over the years through the scheme. This year, we'll have three residencies, two for established musicians and one for emerging. And this year in 2024, the fees are increased. So for the emerging musician, it's eight or it's five thousand, and for the established, it's eight thousand. In your application, we just ask you when you're looking at the budget. It's really important that every member of the creative team is paid fairly. So just look at the budget, allocate for that. Um, We'll also give, so as, as well as the fee, there's access to the studio space in Deal or Lexicon. So for the established musician, it is 10 days over a six week period. And for the emerging, it's six days over a, a six week period. At the end of that, there is you have the opportunity to have a concert in the studio space to present the new work. And the other outcome that's expected is an additional public facing event. Now, this we're very open on this. It's much more informal. It could be a workshop. It could be a rehearsal. It could be an event or a showcase. It doesn't need to be in DLO or Lexicon, for example. It could be in a branch library. It could be in an entirely different part of the county. Um, the Arts Office is very happy to talk to the selected musicians on this. You'll also get a one-hour mentoring session with Music Network's Head of Communications around PR and social media and advice and support from Music Network. In terms of the concerts, the Arts Office and Music Network will do a full social media campaign um, and Sorry, Kira, I think your sound is gone there. Sorry, I think your sound went there just at the end. Um, but I think just, I mean, we, you, she'd, she'd covered exactly what we were going to say there. You'll get the support of the Arts Office um, to help manage the concerts and things like that. Um, yep, so we'll hand over to Deirdre now to talk through the next section in terms of the application process. Great. Thanks very much, Carolyn. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to highlight a few key elements in relation to the application process and the application form itself. So we'll just move on to the next slide there. Uh, thanks, Kieran. So it's a completely online application process and you can visit Music Network's website or dlrcoco.ie to access the application form. And um, once on, you can just register, set up your profile, and then you're good to go. So we'd recommend uh, once you have your profile set up, um, go on and look at the entire form. Just you can see what exactly it entails and what you need to submit your application. You can complete the application in stages so you can save a draft of your form as many times as you want, which you know can be useful. You can go in, prepare different elements and upload those in stages. Now, just to say that once you submit your form, you should receive a confirmation email from Music Network. 
So if that doesn't come into your inbox, you know, very soon after you uh, submit, do check your spam folder. And if you haven't received an email, please do get in touch with us um, on operations at musicnetwork.ie because we won't have received your form unless you receive that confirmation email. So we'll help sort out any issue if that should arise. And then just to mention that we can't, as you can appreciate, accept any late applications. So we've highlighted a special color there at the bottom of the slide, the closing date for applications. So it's 2 p.m. on Tuesday, the 6th of February. Just to let you know, a reminder, we do have that new bank holiday on Monday the 5th. So we'd advise you know, getting your application in the previous week so that if you have any issues, we can help or we can advise um, on the Thursday or Friday. Um, of course, we'll, we'll do our best on the 6th, but time will be limited on that particular day. So just moving on then to the online form itself. It's very straightforward, it's very user-friendly. So um, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't present any issues when you log on, but of course we're, we'll be there to help if there's anything you want to ask a question about, just again, contact us on operations at musicnetwork.ie. So at the beginning of the form, you will be asked to select how your project has a connection to Dunleary Rathdown. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're putting together your project proposal. So there are a number of ways and they're listed in the guidelines as to how you can show this connection to Dunleary Rathdown. And then I just wanted to highlight uh, the essential support materials. So these are materials that you will be asked to submit as part of your application and they all need to be submitted. That's really important. They all need to be submitted in order for your application to be eligible. So just to go through these very briefly with you, you're asked to submit an outline of your proposed residency program of work. So that is essentially a plan which outlines what you want to achieve, how you want to approach it, and why you feel it would be beneficial to your career. So in that uh, plan, you know, if you planned to collaborate with other musicians, for example, you would in include that in the outline, or if you wanted to maybe work on a particular skill or technique aspect of your playing, and you wanted to work with a mentor for a number of sessions, all of that kind of information would go into the program of work. Then you're asked to submit uh, your curriculum vitae, so your CV detailing your past experience. If you're going to work with others, collaborate with others, you'd be asked to submit biographies for each of these collaborators. And also if, for example, as I mentioned, you were planning to work with a mentor. You're also asked to submit two contrasting audio samples of your work. And that's a real chance to, I suppose, showcase the best of your playing. And um, by two contrasting styles, you know, you might want to show different techniques or two different aspects of what you do. You can upload those files as um, mp3 files or as links to for example soundcloud files or youtube videos just make sure if you're sharing links that they are accessible like they're not password protected or anything like that and um, just something to mention as you go through the form there will be tips and kind of hints beside each of the questions and um, particular um, in relation to audio samples for example so make sure to read those as you go along because they'll help you um, answer any questions you might have at the time as you're reading a particular question. And then just two additional things to mention about the audio samples. So, you know, do make sure it's kind of the best representation of your work. It doesn't have to be CD quality. It just needs to be of a standard that, you know, your playing can be clearly heard on the sample. And also if it's a long file and you want the assessment panel to listen to a particular point, you know, if it's a five minute track and you have, for example, a solo, that you want to highlight at two and a half minutes in, just list that when you're listing the recording details, just say, please listen from two minutes and 30 seconds and the panel will go straight to there. So you can be sure that they're going to catch uh, that solo, for example, that you might want them to hear. You're also asked to upload a one minute video clip to outline your ideas. That is very simply something you can record on your mobile phone. And it's just a chance to say in your own words, what you want to do and how you intend to go about it. And um, as Kira referred to, you will be um, asked to submit a detailed budget for your project. And you know, this should outline all project costs, including artist fees, which um, you know, you just need to make sure that everybody is fairly 
paid for the work they carry out as part of this residency project. And don't forget to include yourself as the lead artist uh, in that budget outline to make sure you're fairly remunerated for your work as well. And additional things like you know travel expenses, subsistence, um, mentor fees, all of that um, goes into your project budget and something that Kieran will speak about in a while if there's any additional technical expenses, technical costs, they need to be detailed in the budget as well, which you'll upload through the online form. And then the last thing to mention in terms of essential support materials is you'll see from the guidelines that there are three um, residency periods um, available to apply for, if you like. So you're just asked to outline if you're available for one, two, or all three of those periods. Uh, so there are the essential support materials. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Carolyn. Um, Hi everyone, uh, I'm just going to take, a lot of you will be familiar with DLR Lexicon, um, but I'm just going to go through briefly a quick video tour of the space and the studio space in particular. Kieran, if you wouldn't mind just popping that on for me, that would be great. So here we are just at the main entrance to DLR Lexicon, which is the large public library in Dunleary. Um, you're just coming in here on the third floor and you will see just our security desk here um, where our security staff are available to help at the reception. And then this is going down through the third floor and you'll see the studio is based down on the first floor. So just you can go down in the lift or take the stairs there. You come out at the cafe, go through the cafe. There's also an entrance here on this level as well. Um, here's the cafe and then going into the studio space here. So this is the main stage area here that you can see here. It seats 120 people in the setup. This is the standard setup we'd have. Uh, this is the backstage area. So that's our upright piano you can see, which can be brought out on stage for rehearsals or performance. Uh, this is one of two dressing rooms um, that we have available at this level. And then this is going in behind the stage and into the car park. So in terms of bringing in equipment or instruments, you can bring it in directly from the car park level straight through onto the stage. These are the steps up into our control box. Um, I'll leave it to Kieran to talk you through all the, the technical details of the control area there, but you can see down the view, there's our sound desk and our lighting desk are based up here. Uh, the light is all on presets. Um, we don't allow people access up to the, the lighting there. So as you can see, that's it in the dark. Here's the various different, you see a couple of the different presets here. So it's a lovely space. It works really, really well um, in terms of the seating um, and in terms of the sound, the acoustic is very good. Uh, so going back down the steps here and you'll see just coming back out into the main studio area. So this area is the main fire exit, so it needs to be kept clear all the time there. But it is possible to retract all the seats if you want a very different setup to just have a plain black box type thing. And we have done different setups in the past with either cushions or cabaret style, things like that. And here's the different house light settings right down to the, the pitch darkness there. So there's four different settings on the lights there that are set as standard house lights as the audience are coming in or out or if you want to leave them on for anything. And this is one of our meeting rooms upstairs on level five. So these are also available for the musicians and residents should they wish to use them. A lot of times people use them for meetings or just if they're just doing quiet composition work. This is level four, um, including the children's library. Um, we have hosted some of our more informal concerts here in this space. It can work really well. Uh, this is level five, which is the quiet study area. Um, so it, sometimes the musicians will just use it to, to practice, to have some time, quiet time. And this is our gallery space, which we have often used actually for concerts. And more and more in recent years, we found it's worked really, really well to have the more informal type concerts in there. And um, the studio, maybe for the, the formal last performance, um, but the gallery works really well in terms of that. People can come in and out a bit easier. Um, we found that the audience changes a bit when we have it in the gallery. People are a bit more relaxed coming into that space. And again, the 
the sound works really nicely in there. So it's just another option to consider um, if you're looking at places to host the, either their final concert or work in progress as you go along through the residency. So I will hand you over now to Kieran, who's going to talk us through all the, the tech specs around the studio space. Yeah. So hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to have a chat through some of the technical um, kind of the equipment and how the studio is uh, set up kind of tech wise. Um, I will mention that in the guidelines document, uh, there is an appendix, which is a guide to the DLR lexicon studio for musicians. Uh, and that's certainly something that's worth reading through because it kind of has a bit more detail um, about the kind of day to day in the studio and how it's set up um, and what's available to you in that there. So, yeah, please do have a read through that appendix from the guidelines. Um, but first, I'm just going to talk about some of the equipment that is there um, in the studio. So the first thing you'll notice from the equipment list is that there isn't a PA system in place. Um, so if your final performance did require a PA system and a sound engineer, that would be something that you would need to account for in your budget document that you're submitting with your application. Um, so I know that's not applicable for everyone, but if you did need a PA system, um, that would be something you'd need to kind of account for along with a sound engineer for that concert. Um, you might have seen in the video that there are two speakers hung from the ceiling, but they're not really suitable for the kind of final performance. Um, but there is a, a desk there, an Allen and Heath uh, 24 channel desk, which can be used um, if that would be suitable. So that is something that you could use for your final performance. Um, and there are also some SM58 kind of vocal mics that are there and a variety of kind of boom and smaller mic stands as well. There is an active stereo DI box as well in an equipment cabinet, um, along with some extension cables. Uh, you would have seen the upright piano and piano stool from the virtual tour of the studio. That is something that's available for both the rehearsal and development period, as well as the final concert. Um, but what we will say about that is the uh, piano would need to be tuned and that would also be something you might want to include within your budget document if you were planning on using that piano um, just because the cost of the piano tuner uh, would need to come from the award fund as well. And then there is also a projector which is hung from the ceiling and accessed by the technical booth, uh, the control booth at the back of the room. And um, that's uh, through a HDMI cable to access the projector there and a screen drops down at the back of the performance area. And um, so, yeah, that can be used as well if you wanted to do that for your performance. Uh, but you'll see any other kind of backline stuff in terms of amps or any drums or anything like that. Uh, it's kind of not there in the studio. So that would be need to kind of be brought in by the uh, awardee for rehearsals and for the concert. Uh, and if there was, of course, any costs involved in that, again, that would need to be outlined in your budget document. Um, so next, I'm just going to show you uh, the performance space um, with the lights on the left or just the, the general house lights that are on. And then on the right on that picture, you'll see the kind of performance lights. And um, there's a variety of lights that are fixed. Um, Caroline mentioned earlier on, that the lights can't be kind of accessed to move the focus or positioning, but there is a lighting desk that can kind of go through a variety of fixed settings. Um, and there's quite a few options there, which can be used for the performance as well. Um, so that's kind of the technical info. But again, I will say have a read through with that first appendix, um, which has a bit more detail about some of the other technical aspects of the studio. So I'm going to hand back over to Deirdre now, who's going to give an overview of some of the previous residencies. Thanks, Kieran. Um, yeah, as Kieran said, in terms of an overview of previous residencies, what we have done is put together a video of short clips just to show some examples of past projects that um, residency art would have done here. Um, you'll see from it. We, we've selected quite a variety, but it's just a guide. It's not meant to be that you would 
um, you know, model your projects on these. It's just to show the range of projects and uh, you'll see they're very broad. Um, we would welcome applications from all genres. You know, the panel are always really excited to see, you know, exciting, innovative ideas, you know. So th this is really just to, I suppose, spark some thought, to let you know what some others have done. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that. Um, Kieran, if you can move on to the next slide, I'll just explain the three clips in this first video. We're going to see, uh, first of all, wonderful singer-songwriter Susan McKeown, who was a resident artist in 2018. And you'll see Susan uh, performing here with Jer Kiley on guitar and Trevor Hutchinson on double bass. And Susan made use, great use of the library itself in that she did a lot of research for her project, researching um, extraordinary women who would have lived um, in Dunleary, Rathdown over the years. And she used their stories. Um, they provided the inspiration for a collection of songs, a gorgeous collection, which she wrote and performed at, at the end of her residency. Um, following that, we have a totally different style of residency um, to, to share with you. Um, a Baroque early music specialist, Darren Cornish Moore. He's a trumpet player and cornetto player. And you'll see him in performance here with uh, the wonderful Malcolm Proud on organ. And Darren's project, he wanted to highlight the music of the 18th century composer Thomas Rosen Rosengrave. And You'll see as well, um, Kieran mentioned there was a projector in the studio. You'll see that there are projections on the big screen behind Darren and Malcolm performing. So, you know, that's something you might want to consider if you have a visual element to your um, project proposal. And then finally, uh, this clip finishes with uh, Eamon Cagney. And Eamon is a percussionist and composer, but he's also a storyteller. And he wanted to bring those two worlds together in his project. So he composed new music, which in his final performance, as he narrated a story, the music interspersed um, parts of the story and brought the story to life. So that was another really interesting way to kind of develop his practice and to, to share his work. And you'll see him performing at the end of this video clip with the guitarist, Newell Sumbu. I believe in the holiness of the heart. The human mind can be natural curiosity. Perhaps it was my Fenian blood that called me Three clips again in this video. Uh, we have cellist and composer Leo Bapetri, and she collaborated with um, another artist, Abigail Smith. And together they created a new work called Fragments, and they used loop pedals and strings and flute, their voices, to create this new work. And I suppose what was interesting about this particular project, well, many interesting things about the project, but they the two artists had these um, fragments of ideas, musical ideas kind of floating around in their respective minds for many years. And they just couldn't find the time and the space to devote time to kind of bring, I suppose, bring their ideas to fruition and, and to compose a new work. And so the residency for them was an opportunity to enable them to do this, you know, to have the time and the space. And so that's a really 
valuable thing to keep in mind. You know, you might have a, a kernel of an idea that's been kind of knocking around in your brain for a number of years, and this might be the opportunity for you to kind of bring it to fruition. So that, that's Fragments, which you'll hear um, from Yoga Petri and Abigail Smith. Uh, following that, uh, we have the last um, established uh, musician in residency of 2023, Simon Morgan. And Simon is a composer and a baritone, and he is part of a musical collective, and he wanted to, uh, who actually perform across a range of genres, and he wanted to develop some musical ideas for the collective, and you'll see him here uh, performing in rehearsal uh, with Richie Buckley on saxophone and Drajan Derek on guitar. And then finally, we have a lovely clip um, of our emerging artist from last year, Chris Cole. And Chris is a guitarist and he wanted to develop uh, new music, uh, new arrangements, new compositions for a Duchas project he has, which is kind of inspired by Celtic folklore. And in addition to creating new music, he also wanted to work on a new technique, which he, which was to involve technology in his live performance. And so that was a skill that he was able to develop and kind of grow during his residency. And the clip here is an example of a new work where he incorporates uh, technology in his performance. <laughs> spark some ideas about um, residency projects as, as, as we said you know look I'm sure you have great ideas and we're really looking forward to hearing them and that's just a sample a small sample but you can also check back on the two websites we listed earlier and you'll see past residencies listed and um, you know you'll see other other styles that people have um, performed and other genres and as mentioned again we're really excited to hear from um, people practicing in all genres for this residency, these residency opportunities. So I think now, as Kira mentioned, uh, there was there's an opportunity to uh, come to some of your questions. And um, I know some of you will, I can see there's a, a number already in the Q&A chat, but if you've any additional ones, uh, do please add them now and we'll go through them and uh, hopefully clarify any uh, things that you may have a question about. So uh, the first question is from Orla. Um, can you apply even if you live in Fingal or if you have if you had a connection to Dunleary in the past? So Kira or Carolyn, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. So um, the, there's three kind of ways that you can make an application, be eligible for an application. 
So the, the first is that you're living and working in Dunleary. And in the case of a group, that would mean that all of the, the um, members of the group or band would need to be living or working in Dunleary. Um, but you can also have a project which connects to Dunleary in some way. So it may be that we've had, say, I'll just give one example. We had a musician in residence who had a project based around Roger Casement um, and the work that he did and his music all related to that. So it had a very specific Dunleary theme to it. Or you can be working with a group uh, from the county, from Dunleary Rat Down. So it might be that you, for instance, wanted to work with a particular school in the area or a particular uh, group of musicians in the area. Um, you know, so you, you can link in various different ways, but uh, you would have to have a connection to the county in some way, shape or form. And do think about that as you're making your application to us, that it is Dunleary Rat Down County Council that you're applying to and Music Network and the Arts Council have funded it. So think about all of those people and why they might pick you as the, the musician in residence for this year. And think about Dunleary and the area and not just Dunleary, but Dunleary Rat Down. It could encompass, for instance, the mountains in Glen Cullen or somewhere like that. So you might have a theme that focuses in on that and that would be perfectly eligible. So when I say Dunleary Rat and it's that whole area of kind of right from as we describe it from the mountains down to the sea and um, so look at where that area encompasses and see is there a theme that that would fit in with what you're doing and um, or if there's a group that you would like to have a kind of um participatory or collaborative practice with over the course of your residency and um, hopefully is there anything else we should add to that kira no that's no. perfect that covers it yeah right um the next question is asking about, is it possible to apply for an interdisciplinary project collaborating with a collaborator from an, in another art form? What we would stress is that this is very much a musicians in residence uh, program. There could be a very small element, but the main focus is on musicians and supporting musicians to create new work so in certain circumstances say there have been musicians who might have had some element of collaboration say perhaps for the end performance where there might be a small there's been maybe a small dance element or a small visual element um that is something that could work but as it would it we would not be open really to say a 50 50 interdisciplinary collaborative um application it needs to be very much strongly music Great. Thanks, Kira. Um, yes, so moving on, is it 5,000 max or does every project get 5,000 regardless of the number of participants and costs? Thanks. I think I suppose, Kira, you probably clarified that earlier um, in that, you know, that is the maximum award for the emerging musician in residence and 8,000 for the established musician in residence. And as we've probably repeat, said a number of times during the, the session that everything really needs to be accounted for within that, regardless of the number of collaborators um, or the number, you know, the costs, if you have technical costs. I suppose that is something to be mindful when you're putting your project together, because as we've said, it's really important to ensure that everyone is fairly paid for their work. So if the max budget is 5,000, you know, you need to think about the scale of your project and what's appropriate to make sure that everyone can be fairly paid. You know, you may not be able to pay 10 people with that. You may be able to pay three people appropriately or two people appropriately, depending on what your project entails. Um, anything else to add to that? No, I think it's it's really like you say, Deirdre, it's just considering it in advance, you know, what what you'd like to do and, and working within the budget. Um, and do feel free to get in touch if you need to query anything in advance. But that you know that you do need to to really think about the budget so that everyone you're collaborating with um gets paid. That's very important. Um, the next question is asking about the final performance, whether it's a full show or just presenting the new works. Generally speaking, um, the final performances have been between forty five minutes and an hour. Um, there's a strong focus on the new work. But obviously, um, most musicians are not going to have an entire concert of work at the end of the residency. So often what's happened is all the new work will be presented and then there might be a couple of other pieces presented as well. And, and that's absolutely fine, too. 
great, great. So you don't need to be under pressure to compose or write a, a full concert of music, I suppose, is what we're saying here. But uh, yeah, we do want to hear the fabulous new music or arrangement that you've created during the residency. Um, so what defines an established artist from an emerging one? Well, I think that's a, a very good question. One we, we do get asked quite a lot. And, you know, it is ultimately, um, I suppose, a decision you need to make, but do feel to give us a call about it. But what we thought might be helpful is to um, share a definition which is based on the Arts Council's definition of what an emerging artist and an established artist is. It just might be helpful for you to make your decision as to which residency opportunity you should apply for. And as I said, do feel free to, to talk to us about that if you are unsure. But an established uh, professional performing musician is defined as someone of any age performing in any genre who has a demonstrable track record. So a, a past history, a demonstrable track record in professional music performance. And um, you don't have to earn your income exclusively or continuously from this practice. So you might be working in another area as well, but uh, you do have to have a, a strong track record in performance. And then another key thing is that um, you are recognized by your peers as a professional musician. So they're the kind of key points as a guide um, to kind of think about if you are an established professional performing musician. What the Arts Council say about an emerging professional performing musician, again, it's someone of any age. You can be emerging at any age, performing in any genre, but you are in the process of mastering your music performance practice. So you're at an earlier stage in your career. Um, it says you're in the early years of establishing a professional performing career. You have some experience, but have not yet established a solid reputation as a performer, as a professional performing musician. And again, you must be someone who identifies as and re is recognized by your peers as a professional musician. So it's really about career stage, I think, is probably the, the, the kernel of the the uh, decision here, you know, where you are in your professional practice. Um, so hopefully that has clarified um, this question, not only for yourself, Jamie, but for others as well. Uh, Kieran, maybe you might take this next one um, from Orla. Just to clarify, there is a sound desk, but no speakers. Yes, so there is a, yeah, the Allen and Heath 24 channel sound desk there in the studio space. Um, and there are two kind of small speakers hung from the ceiling, but they wouldn't really be suitable for a music performance, kind of like a final concert performance. Um, so a kind of PA system along with a sound engineer um, and kind of anything to go with that, dependent on what your performance needs. Uh, would need to be hired in um, and accounted for within your budget. Um, the sound desk can be used. Um, you know, you, it might be something to, to run by a sound engineer to see if this sound desk would work uh, or, you know, if it doesn't for their particular PA system setup, you know, generally um, previous awardees would have just hired in a PA system, a sound desk and a sound engineer kind of all as one. Um, but the option is there to use that sound desk. But no, the speakers wouldn't really be suitable for the final concert. So I hope that, uh, yeah. that clears that one up, Orla. And just to add to that, that I think practically every musician will bring in a sound engineer under the budget. I think Kieran from, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think practically all of them have. Yeah, um, so there, yeah, there will be uh, some that, that wouldn't use a PA system as well, but anytime it's been used, yeah, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. And if there is also, you know, if you need recommendations for sound engineer or whatever, there can be, you know, that can be advised on too. So do feel free to ask. Um, there's a question around whether the process is open to international applicants. So just to just to be mindful, the budgets are fully inclusive. So there is no additional budget for travel, for accommodation. Um, also, in terms of the access to the studio over the six week period, there needs to be flexibility in terms of the studios are really, really busy space. So it could be that you might get two days in a row 
or it might be we found maybe sometimes someone could be coming in for a morning and then a couple of days later they could be coming in for a full day so there needs to be flexibility um on that and there the budgets are completely inclusive of all those costs and they would need to be um really are outlined in an application process um, I have to say, um, you know, it would be disappointing as a selector to to read a large chunk of the budget taken up on flights and accommodation. And um, we'd be hoping that the budget would be spent on the creation of the music. That said, you would be eligible in terms of if you live, work or ri- if you were originally from or had studied a relevant discipline in the county, that would make you eligible. So you certainly would. We would be open to it. But perhaps it'd be an instance whereby if you, you weren't coming from very far or you had someone here that you were staying with, so you weren't eating up your whole budget paying Mm. for accommodation and things like that because I think just in terms of selection process that would be unlikely to to be successful so just being open and honest with you and that that uh, you know we would prefer to to see that you would as Kira said you'd need to be available over that period of the six weeks as well so that might impact your decision as to whether this is a good fit or not yeah um there's a couple of questions around the gallery space um and uh performing in it so um generally speaking we've had we've had really good feedback from musicians about the acoustics in the gallery space um to give a recent example um chris cole who's emerging musician last year and um, did an informal concert at lunchtime in the gallery and he just had i think he just had one speaker actually i think maybe it was a really really simple setup and um, that's very easy to do uh, we can bring seats in and that works really nicely. The sound is nice too. Um, so yeah, we're we're very open to that for sure. And certainly in terms of other library spaces, we have done that in the past as well. Um, the gallery is managed by the arts office, so it is probably the most straightforward and simple in terms of getting a day there. Um, in terms of the library, it really depends on kind of things like time of year. Um, if we're mid exam times, we, we generally don't have music performances in the the library spaces and um, just because obviously if people are studying away they might find it disruptive but certainly we have done them say over the summer or on culture night or um as part of other family days and things here and um, so it is it is definitely an option but again it's factoring some of that into your budget then it, whether you, if you were to have it in another library space and you have to bring in more setup you need to budget for that so just be aware of that that once you move it outside of say the the studio or the gallery you might incur other costs there as well if there was additional things that needed to be brought in in terms of technical equipment or anything if it's a simple setup, again, yeah. um, say Black Rock Library has a, a lovely small kind of um, room that they use for performances that would probably seat about 30 or so. That that has been used for an informal lunchtime concert by one of the musicians before. Um, there's other spaces that we'd be very open to looking at um, on different projects, for example, where we are partnering up in Glen Cullen and there is a community space there. And, you know, there there's certain spaces like that we'd be very open to looking at. As Carolyn's saying, it's probably more suited to the informal type of whether it's like a, a work in progress performance or just like an, an open type rehearsal. Um, probably less so for the formal. So the end concert is probably best put into the studio space because it's set up, it has all the seating and everything. But there is definitely scope to look at more informal ones in other spaces. Yeah, and just to mention, we have used, as Kira kind of said there, spaces outside the lexicon around the county. So, for instance, we would have had some of the concerts in places like our historic houses, like Cabin Teeley House or Marley Park House, in, you know, at times. So, you know, to be aware of that, that that is an option as well. Um, or on a very odd occasion, you might have something that's very site specific around if you were, for instance, doing something around the pier or one of the parks or something like that. It could be an instance where you look at doing it an off-site performance at some stage during the, the residency. Um, Kieran, there's a couple of questions around vocal performances in the studio that you might be best placed to answer. We have certainly had choral performances without any amplification, but um, I think maybe you might be best placed to answer this one. Yeah, so the first question there, um, is it possible to perform acoustically in the studio or would that be more appropriate in the gallery or other library space? Um, so 
the studio yet. It certainly could be uh, performed acoustically in there. Um, there are black, kind of heavy black curtains that go around the walls, which can be pulled back to kind of reveal a wood panelling behind, which would kind of make it a bit more of a, um, a lively acoustic in the room. Um, so that is something that could be done as well. Um, but really, if it was, it just kind of depends on the instrumentation. Uh, but there have been kind of more acoustic performances in the studio space before. Um, the gallery is a much more kind of livelier room. Um, so even a, like an unamplified vocal group there. And the next question, um, that would be kind of, you know, very suited to the gallery space. Um, it is 120 seats in the studio. Uh, so kind of just thinking of the size of the room, if you kind of think of how big that would be, um, it could be done. But yeah, really, it just depends on what your kind of preference would be. If you wanted it, if you needed a really lively room or, um, you know, the gallery could be a more appropriate space for that. Um, but really, yeah, it just depends on your own kind of how many people there is and that in the group as well. Yeah, from a, a choral perspective there, I might jump in um, that it would be quite a dead acoustic from the vocal perspective in the studio space. You know, if a, like a, a four or five piece vocal group, the gallery space would be ideal, um, you know, in terms of uh, from, I think both from the artist's point of view, uh, what they'd get back from the acoustic in the gallery and also from the audience perspective, you know, it would certainly enhance uh, the vocal sound so probably more the, the gallery if it's an unaccompanied vocal group um, I think would be best um, I, don't, I think that's have we come to the right. end of our questions I think here? that's I think that is all the questions unless anyone has a last one they want to put in um, you're very welcome to what to um email any queries we would just say again it's best to do that in advance and not leave it till the last minute just to give yourselves a chance um to make the application the brief is really detailed so that's on both music network and the arts office website so do have a read through that um it is very detailed and it should have all the information in it yeah, and just obviously the reminder then again is that the, the closing day for applications is Tuesday the 6th of February at 2 p.m. Um, so please do make sure you give plenty of time to, to get all your materials and everything uploaded in advance of that deadline. Um, and as Kira said and Deirdre both said there, you know, please do feel free to contact us in advance, um, you know, and give us time to answer any queries for you. And all the stuff to say really is just good luck with your applications. And thank you very much for coming this morning. Thank you all. Thanks and we're really looking forward to reading your applications. Thank you.